All right, welcome back, uh, EDH Takes. I'm Spencer Cook. Hi, I'm Elijah Samuelson. And uh, we're going to do another of our tier list, um, two-color pairs, the guilds. Now we're on Selesnia. Yeah, Selesnia, the most boring guild. <laughs> no, that's that's flame. Selesnia is cool. Yeah, uh, I personally, Eli, I haven't played um, a lot of Selesnia. I think I've only ever played one Selesnia deck before. Yourself? I probably have two in the books. I think around two. I've played more than two, but yeah, we don't have a whole lot to say about Selesnia. Well, that being said, I do think, you know, I've played a lot of Selesnia cards in Selesnia Plus decks, and I think Selesnia overall is a pretty fair color combination. does a lot of good, um, you know, non-offensive things. Yeah, there's a lot of very simple Selesnia commanders. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, I'm showing my personal bias that I don't like Selesnia that much because it's, it's weird. My favorite color is white. My least favorite color is probably green. You might think blue, but I think it's actually green. It's the color I pro probably play the least of. So but, you're pulling a couple directions there, I see. Yeah, so it's, I don't know what to think. But well, they've got some pretty cool commanders. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say before we start that just like all of our other tier list episodes, the um s tier or whatever they're completely independent so our s tier selesnia commanders are not uh necessarily equal or even comparable to for example our s tier orzov commanders or s tier azorius commanders that we've done in the past so it's all standalone we may in the future go back and um try to compare some of the uh tier lists commanders to each other but yeah and to address one other thing this isn't strictly on a power level standpoint because a card is an S tier, that doesn't mean we think it's like the most competitive CEDH commander or something like that. It's mm -hmm. just it's a combination of factors, including general like fun or like versatility and how good they are in a variety of like play styles and different deck builds. So, for example, yeah, like you were saying, Eli, uh, uh, a CEDH. Um, I'm not sure if there's really many CEDH um, Celestia commanders, but if there was one. Um, it wouldn't necessarily get top of S tier just because it is the best CDH deck of the colors. Um, but that it does contribute into that. If there is a very good combo um, for a commander or something, that does definitely contribute to a higher placing on the tier list. It's just not necessarily you know, the top of S tier because it's got a good combo in it or whatever. Yeah, and like we said, we don't play a lot of Selesnia, so a lot of our ignorance might feed into... Uh some of the decisions on this list yeah so for sure feel free to um give us your opinions on the list and tell us what we're overlooking because like like we've said we're kind of just going to go through it and give our you know opinions and and we're also very biased based on what we like so that's going to be very apparent you'll find that you know if a card says draw a card on it um in the command zone <laughs> i'm probably going to put it at least as a b tier <laughs> but maybe not but yeah so should we start off with the first on this list is mm -hmm. actually one that I have some experience playing. I, I knew somebody who had a an Arabo Roar of the World deck. It's a 5-mana five 5-5, five, mm -hmm. so already pretty good. It's a cat avatar. has the Eminence ability, so this works at the beginning of combat on your turn if it's on the battlefield or in your command zone. Another target cat you control gets plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn. And whenever another cat you control attacks, you may pay 1, a green, a white, if you do, it gains Trample and gets plus X, plus X until on a turn where X is its power. So yeah, it doubles its power and it gets Trample. Um, so I've, I'm have i I'm one to not be a fan of um, strictly tribal decks. And, I'm, and I like to build tribal decks that aren't solely focused on the tribe. But this is, a, this is a tribal commander where you pretty much have to do cat things, right? Because it doesn't do anything else besides things with cats right it doesn't it can't even pump itself right right yeah it only targets another cat so you have to be playing cats and that's a pretty significant downside because uh outside of you know a, a couple there's there's two or three or four pretty solid cats that i, I think um mm -hmm. besides that you really are kind of bottlenecked um, i guess you have some shapeshifters but uh, besides those right not too much yeah so how i helped build this deck was pretty much every one mana cat so that you can consistently be attacking for between 4 and 5 damage on turn 2 using Arbo's Eminence ability. Because mm -hmm. I thought that was cool and playing around with some, some power matter stuff and taking advantage of things like Rishkar's Expertise or Traverse the Outlands. Souls stuff Majesty, like that. that kind of thing. Yeah, that sort of thing. And then also playing, like, they had some good value cats in that deck. Like Kasali Slingers was 
kind of a re reclamation sage that also triggers again if you play another cat. Yeah, they've got like a couple ones that draw cards when they enter or something. And then you have one of the best cats, Mirror Entity. Best cat. And uh, <laughs> Chameleon Colossus is actually amazing in this deck because you give it plus three, plus three, and then you can use its own ability to double its power and toughness. And then maybe stack that with Arabo so that can get just huge. Yeah, that'll... I mean, Arabo gives Trample as well, so that can one-shot people, I think, with just a little... So let me think. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Arabo gives plus 3, plus 3, up to 7. You can activate the Chameleon Colossus' ability to go up to 14, then Arabo up to 28, and then Chameleon Colossus' ability one more time up to uh, 56. And that is 11 mana, I think, which is a lot, but, you know, that is that is a, a one-shot with Trample, so that's something. Yeah, so this is mostly considered the weakest of the eminence commanders mm -hmm. because people really discount the power of combat damage in commander but plus three plus three as soon as like turn two that's that's not nothing and I it happens pretty good always right like it's not even just like like if, if it's on the field if it's in your command zone if they kill it you put it back in the command zone every turn if you have a cat you're getting value from it so that's a significant you know something that most commanders can't say that they do something for you you know, every turn or every, you know, whatever, as long as you have a cat, that is. But so I, I, I kind of like, I'm, not, I'm pretty high on Arabo. I think if I was to build a Celestia deck, it would be up there with ones I would probably choose. It's kind of interesting. I don't, I don't like tribal decks too much, but I, I think it's a surprisingly viable aggro deck. So I'm thinking somewhere in, in B tier or A tier. I don't know. I think somewhere in B tier. Sure. I, I think we'll just leave it there for now and move on. Oh, what's this next guy's name? He's a legend. As Mira, Holy Avenger, from Mirage. More not legends, Mirage. Okay. It is a two-three with flying. At the end of each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on as Mira, Holy Avenger, for each creature put into your graveyard from play that turn. So that's uh, hmm. that's not much really. So I'm trying to think. Well, I mean, it's I. I mean, I'm just gonna put it in F tier, but I don't. Yeah, I just can't really think of anything because it wants you to board wipe and somehow protect itself, or is it? Is it only your creatures? Yeah, your graveyard. Yep. So maybe it wants to, and it's only from the field. So I guess sacrifice creatures, but I don't know really what kind of a sacrifice deck you're playing in these colors. Um, and if you're even sacrificing like two or three tokens, it's just giving itself a counter. I think you could be doing a lot, a lot better. It's just a dude. Yeah, old card syndrome. Yeah, I think uh, F tier. Yeah, this for seems now. like uh, what's the um, the um, this plus uh, plus blue the the cost like some mana to put a counter in itself. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, Janara, yeah, Sura of War. Seems like Janara would just do whatever this Janara does better. Is so cool. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I guess that not much to talk about her. We'll just her him her right. I think that's a lady. Well, I can't tell if it's the one with the wings or the one that's being held, but <laughs> obviously it's the one the one with the wings. Now we've got Captain Sisse. Yeah, Captain Sisse. She, you can tap her and search for a legend or a legendary card, reveal that card, and put it in your hand, then shuffle your library. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, you know, you'd, simple, very good. Very, it's like one like one line of text, pretty much. I mean, it's a couple lines. You know what I mean? One ability. Um, four mana two two is not great, of course, but like it's really not. It's really the goal is to get something into your hand, and it doesn't cost any mana to get a, to draw a card, specifically tutor a card, mm -hmm. and that's super valuable. I'd say this used to get Paradox Engine, and that was really good. <laughs> yeah, but back in the day, it still gets Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, still gets Elish Norn. Mm -hmm. All some of your best finishers in Commander are legendary creatures, and so. you'd be surprised also how many like other legendary. Um, permanents or even just cards there are these days. You've got the cycle of legendary sorceries that you can get with um, if you need to have a legend in, uh, to play them. There's the uh, there's a bunch of equipment that you can get with this um, like um, Black Blade and stuff like that I think is legendary. So what you do, Spencer, is you tutor the original Kamal that you can pay a green internal land into a 1-1 one -one, yeah. and then you tutor Elish Norn and you can start paying one mana to destroy people's lands. Or you tutor Kamal, then you tutor, tutor Gaia's Cradle, and then you can turn all of your creatures into lands and then tap for <laughs> all your lands into creatures, excuse I, me. That doesn't seem like a I good idea. I think she's an S tier. She's got to be really good. I mean, there's also, like, yeah, just getting a, a multitude of, of lands, creatures, enchantments. They even have made um, legendary um, enchant... Are, are Sagas legendary? No, right? They're not. 
I don't think. No, they are not. They're but, historic, but not legendary. But I think there are some legendary enchantments that have... I mean, there's legendary There's legendary removal pieces. There's legendary, you know, board wipes these days, too. So you can you can just get anything you need. Is deck. she, like, the perfect toolbox commander? I She's gotta be, because she doesn't even, like, require you to ping any mana to get anything. You can just, every turn that she sticks around, you can just get the perfect thing for now. Yeah, and there's more and more legends coming out with every set. Like, the more Wizards yeah. really, like, hard focuses on commander the better she probably gets so i, I think she's got to be yeah yeah maybe S-tier. she'll tier she might move down i haven't really looked at what else is here for like s tier but oh and just in case you were curious we just put the things up in s tier until we place them so for example chorus of the conclave here is not an s tier commander i'll spoil it for you yeah so this costs um a million mana eight mana yeah yeah eight mana it is a three eight with forest walk and as an additional cost to cast creature spells you may pay any amount of mana. If you do, that creature enters the battlefield with that many plus one plus one counters on it. So, like, at what rate is that even that good? So you pay one extra mana and you get an extra power and toughness. Yeah, you really, like, the only thing that I'd, like, be happy... I mean, obviously there's a lot of things that probably be happy doing that too, but, like, the first thing that comes into my mind is, like, Walking Ballista, where you can pay, instead of paying, you know, five, six mana for a 3-3, three, three, you get to pay three mana for a 3-3 three, three or whatever, you know, which is interesting but after playing your eight mana three eight with forest walk right like this doesn't really do anything right yeah i i don't know this has got to be an f tier commander right i almost don't because i know there's there's a lot worse than it but it is it is f tier i think i think it's got to be worse than 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 um than asmira i got i say i'm gonna say it yeah I, I, i'm with I feel, you i, I think so. i'm with you there like because with asmira you can at least just like put a Maybe 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 play but, your. Hey, uh-huh. it has forest walk in the post Yavamaya cradle of. <laughs> you make everyone's life. yeah. So I <laughs> swamp walk is is better than most other walks because you can play your Urborg. So same with forest walk now because you have Yavamaya. Interesting. Now I've never actually seen this next card. This is Daughter of Autumn. So I actually have a copy of Daughter of Autumn that my brother found on the floor of a bus trampled over by water damage and stuff so he gave it to me so well, it's it's a reserveless card so <laughs> only a two dollar reserveless card that's saying so get your copies now i actually might have it like pinned to a tag board somewhere in here probably <laughs> he's looking over at the wall yeah. trying to find it but this is a four mana two four um lady holding an apple and uh it says uh pay a white mana to redirect two daughter of autumn one damage dealt to a white creature so it, it, in more modern text it says one uh, a white mana the next one damage that'll be dealt to target white creature this turn is dealt to daughter of autumn instead so this is really good for a homelands card that's true i mean like we were talking about that old card syndrome it's got something that it does right <laughs> as opposed to so many of the other commanders from this era where they just like don't do anything that we would care about this does almost something that we care about right there's yeah. some interesting things here, right? Like, you have, like, those white effects that, like, um, if damage would be dealt to you or something, deal damage to this creature instead. Like, Protector of the Guard, I believe. And there's another creature that does the same thing. And then if you have the ability to give this, like, Indestructible or something, I guess you can pay one white mana to prevent every one damage. Yeah, this costs one mana per damage. So, so that's really... Oh, I, I, I hate to say it. I don't want to do it for this many in a row, but... F tier... <laughs> Worse than, Co- I, I think it's worse I think it's than worse. The, uh, the chorus. I was trying to trying to do something with it, you know. I was you build up the great machine of four or five cards, and what that does for you is you can pay one mana to prevent one damage. <laughs> oh no! Okay, now we have uh, Dragon Lord Dramoka. This one actually is 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 quite oh, good. She's epic. Yeah, I love this card actually. It's a uh, six mana for a five seven Elder Dragon, and it can't be countered. His flying and lifelink. And it says, your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. I love it. I love everything about Dragonlord Jamoka. Mm-hmm. I think if I had to make a Selesnia deck, I'm, I might like to at least play Dragonlord Jamoka in it. Maybe have it be the commander just as like a good top-end aggro card that really it stops fogs, it stops interaction on your, your swings. Like, mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, not saying that necessarily equipment are amazing in this color combination but if you're going i mean they have a couple commanders to care about it but if you're going to go for like an equipment theme or whatever one of the ways that you get you know kind of blown out is when they kill your stuff after you've equipped it before you can get your value off of your attacks or whatever Mm -hmm. so if they can't cast spells during your turn that's very helpful um 
Lifelink, very undervalued in Commander, I believe. Um, very undervalued. That is very good. Like, you could play Sylvan Library in this deck and just always pay the 8. And yeah, you just swing for 5 or whatever, get most of it back. Yeah. And also, you know, unless someone's going has a very, very, very good attacker, what can attack into Dragonlord Dromoka profitably? You're gonna you're gonna block it with your five seven. Like maybe they attack you with like three creatures. You're gonna like take no damage total because of the life gain. You're gonna you know take out one of their dudes and then what? So that's that's very nice. So I want to give Dragon Lord Jamoka like a, a high A tier. Yeah, I'm with yeah. A tier. A tier for that one. Oh, next. So one of the things with our other tier lists um, that I regret to say is that we did not you know because the way we do these, we just do whatever commanders are uh, out at the time of making them. So. Our first um, three, uh, I think all three of them, uh, tier lists did not have any any cards from um, the Le Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and mm. luckily, you know, we get we get one of the most popular um, D and D characters um, as uh, Dritzt Do Erden. I did not know how to pronounce that before, but there we go. Um, Dritzt is kind of cool, very very iconic card. It's a five mana three three with double strike, and it says when it enters the battlefield, you get a four one. Uh, green cat um, named Guenevar um, token with trample and uh, it's legendary as well and then when a creature dies any creature on any one side of the field if it has greater power than Dritzt um, you get that many counters on Dritzt equal the difference in power so I mean I don't know how much we want to go in depth with all these cards right because there's a lot to talk about but um, I think Dritzt is just out, out the gate like very 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 standalone powerful like it don't doesn't really require much build around at all to just do what it's going to do and hit for mm -hmm. a lot of damage is what it does what do you think about what's your first impression of dritzt eli i like it it's a lot of a lot of power a lot of damage for five mana 10 10 10 damage specifically for five mana yeah so that's pretty good i like the idea of maybe blinking or bouncing dritzt and just getting the the creature token again yeah, a bunch that's, of times. Yeah, that's nice. Um, it's after after it dies because, you know, it's legendary. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, when, I mean, people are going to block your 4-1 unless they just want to take the 4. And if that's the case, then Dritz becomes a 4-4 four, four double strike, which is a lot. Um, swords go well on Dritz. Um, I mean, I guess if you play your, your removal... Unfortunately, it doesn't really... The, the best removal spells in, in these colors are exile effects, but... You know, if you're playing, like, maybe some of the board wipes that kill everything except for, like, one creature. Like, uh, Tragic Arrogance or something. Yeah, so, eventually, though, Dritz kind of starts shutting itself off because it gets too big to get counters. But at that point, it's, like, an 8-8 or something, or, like, a 6-6, mm -hmm. and it's we double strike. And that's it's probably good enough. Yeah. I feel like the only one thing with Dritz is it's the kind of commander where... It is like a card that people are gonna kill because they're gonna die to it, and then it gets it is reasonably expensive, so it'll get to be seven or nine mana, and then it resets all the way back down. So um, that's my very small problem with it. But I I want to put it like in a tier somewhere. I don't know where a -tier. exactly. I don't. You don't think it's that good? I don't know. I don't. It's so my 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 reason for doing this is because I have a Jira deck that's built just to be like attack with dudes mm -hmm. like it's not like really a populate deck and i've been very happy with my jared deck just being um 10 power attacking the next turn after you play jared mm -hmm. because it's the two five and two rhinos and this is similar to that although this is a lot more blockable right than jared so maybe that's why it's maybe it's yeah worse. yeah guinevere is gonna go down probably right away because it's a four one you'll yeah. still take something down with it probably and then they probably chump the four four because it's eight damage in one creature. Whereas with mm -hmm. um, whereas with Jirid, it's like two four fours of trample, and they can't really just they'd like okay, I'll chump two of the damage, or I'll just take eight, right? Like it's different. Mm -hmm. So sure, I could be convinced that it's worse. Um, what do you want to do, B tier then? Or I was what? thinking maybe like B tier. Do you think above uh, the cat or below the cat? It is a this has a cat too. <laughs> I think uh, I think I like Arabo's cats better. All right, I'll I'll let it slide. I because they have more than one toughness. Sure, I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, above that, but you know we haven't seen the deck yet. It hasn't even come out in paper. Um, maybe you'd you'd probably put this in the Arabos deck because it comes with the cat. Is is the Dritz deck just all about like this guy trying to get his cat killed? Pretty um, much. Well, I think it's more of like he's got the cat, and then like he gets he gets mad when the cat dies. He's like, 
go into battle my four one, and then it dies. And he's like, "No, I never. How could this happen? How could this happen to me?" <laughs> but sure, we'll we'll put him there for now. Um, now we got the other Dramoka. You want to talk about this, Eli? Yeah, Dramoka the Eternal is a five mana five five with flying, and whenever a dragon you control attacks, bolster two, and she is a dragon. Mm-hmm. So if she's the only creature you have. She attacks and becomes a 7-7. Just something. Yeah, but Bolster is kind of a... Yeah, underwhelming mechanic in my opinion. It has to be the creature with the least toughness among creatures you control. And then it gets the counters, yeah. So if you have like a mana dork out and you attack with Dramoka, it's like you have a 1-1, put two plus one plus one counters on that. And that's like, it's not terrible, but... The next turn as well, you have to put them on that 3-3 now, so... I just, I think, uh, you know, like you said, Dritz, like, is good, and that's a lot more damage than it looks like, but I think they're both just a little underwhelming to me, because, like, that's kind of all they do is well, damage. I'm definitely much higher on Dritz than I am on, on, on Dramoka. Yeah, Dritz or, has a lot more play, I think, Yeah. Dramoka. Well, also, it has to get knocked, because, like, like, I don't see a Celestia Dragons deck being really a thing, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. what, like, dragons are you playing, like... Besides the the Jeronkas, I guess you have the new Timeless Dragon, which probably fit in this deck because it curves right into this. But like, other than that, I don't even know like what you're even playing. Yeah. That being said, it's a five mana five five with flying. That's if that's, that is your only creature, it's gonna be a seven seven. That is solid. I mean, so it's okay. I just I think it's kind of boring. So yeah. I'd maybe say like C tier. I'm feeling C or D tier. I mean, maybe, it's not awful. It's I don't not. Think, I don't I, think it's D tier. There are some bad cards here. I think that I would put in D tier that I just don't like very much. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if I'd say bad, but like, I don't know. We'll get to that when we get to that. Sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna pensively say low C tier. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we've got from um, Jumpstart. Yeah, I Jumpstart. believe. Yeah, Emil the Blessed. I believe. Um, or Emil, if you prefer. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But this is a card that has the that has had the unfortunate, uh, that has been unfortunately been like sixty dollars for like ever. Because yeah, a lot of the Jumpstart Mythics are quite expensive. So a lot of people have not got the chance to play with it, even though it's been out for like a whole year, more than a year, I think. Yep. Um, or maybe not, maybe less than a year. But um, it's a four mana four four unicorn, and it says three mana. Exile another target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. And uh, it also has the static ability of whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can pay a hybrid Selesnia. And if you do, it gets a counter on it. And if it's a unicorn, you get two counters on it instead. I don't think that... God bless whoever builds this as a unicorn deck. They are... uh... But this is probably one of the strongest Blink Commanders there is, I think. It notably will go infinite with something like Ashnod's Altar and a, an Avenger of Zendikar. Yeah, something Or just like any that. creature like that. Um, uh, Phyrexian Altar, because you need because uh, you need uh, color mana. No, right? you don't need colored mana to... to oh, to blink it. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. Sorry. I the... mean, yeah, I guess if you, you could make something uh, infinitely big, too, if you had the Phyrexian Altar. It, it does it. It also does it. It also goes infinite with the Phyrexian Altar, too. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know why I was thinking that you needed the colored mana for the blink. So that's that's pretty cool. That's that's why it's so powerful, is because you don't need the colored mana for the blink. So that's one of the that's one of the downsides mm-hmm. of a card like Eldrazi Splicer. That would go infinite with a lot of things, but you need colorless mana. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it does still go infinite with... um, It still does go infinite with, like, Avengers Endicar and, and uh, Ashon's Altar, but just not... You know, this is in the command zone is the big difference, right? That being said, even without that, uh, three mana to blink something is still a very good rate, instant speed. Yeah, you're able to build a really, really synergistic deck around this and just be able to hold up your mana and never, like, never have anything besides Emil die and, like, just bring them back and hit people's uh, artifacts and enchantments, maybe their creatures with some white, like, like the new white, like, uh, the new white um, Eternal, um, not Eternal, um, incarnation that like oh, yeah, solitude solitude you yeah. can like blink that over and over again there's a lot of good stuff you can do you can even um you can even eternalize or not um not eternalize you could uh evoke a solitude at instant speed and then you could uh blink it with the sacrifice trigger on the stack yeah pay the three mana so it just would cost three mana once you have emil out to get rid of two things and have that guy on the field forever so that sounds very powerful to me i don't know about you I think Emil's another S tier. It's got to be. I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to put it above. I don't know if this is crazy. I want to put it above Captain Sisse. What Maybe. Yeah, I could see that. Sure. Now, is this Amara? What is this? Amara, Soul of the Accord. Yeah. 
She's a 2-mana two 2-2, two two, and whenever she becomes tapped, you create a 1-1 one one white soldier creature token with lifelink. That's not bad. That's pretty... Like, it, okay. it's it's not, like, a lot of things that it does, but it is a two-drop commander, and I am, uh... My, my heart my heart goes out to you, any two-drop commanders, because I love that about a, a commander. And I know a lot of people want to think, like, I'll put a Paradise Mantle on her, or I'll have, give her some activated ability or something, but... I don't know, just attacking and getting a 1-1. One, one, that's pretty good. Even if she attacks, like... Like, let's say she atta- she can get in, like, t- one or two times before people have blockers for her. Like, making a couple tokens, and then maybe later on, after she's been on the board for a while... Because she's not a big threat, they're not going to, like, prioritize killing her. Maybe you get, like, some ability that gives your guys uh, protection from a color, or you can put a sword on her or something and get in another attack. Um, the one was lifelink are, are valuable. Like, they will keep you alive against decks that don't have flying. Yeah, lifelink is good. I'm a sucker for skull clamp synergy. Cards, very good. So. Very good. Um, I, it's not like amazing, right? I want to give her like a B tier. I think I'd put her down here, right? Yeah. Maybe below Dritz, I think. Um, but she's she's cool. I like her. I would I would. She's a card I would build probably. You could also play token synergies and stuff, but yeah. And she's come a long way since uh, <laughs> Imara Tandris. Yeah, from uh, what is this original Zen- original um. Or no, Dragon's Maze. Dragon's Maze. Yeah. So she's a 7 mana 5 7 that says prevent all damage that be dealt to creature tokens you control. So this was actually one of my first Selesnia decks that I built before I. Because it looked like the kind of card that should be a commander, because I was like, oh, it's it's a legendary creature, it's it's the colors that I want to play for this thing, and it's it says has this ability that makes it look like it's synergistic, like with a token deck or something. Yeah. But it's just terrible. So I switched that to Tristani, like, immediately. Yeah, she... Well, you might look at this and see the prevent damage to tokens you can... Token creatures you control, and think, like, oh my god, they have indestructible. Or, like, you might... That might be your first, like, thought. Or, like, oh, they're... You know, people can't block them now because, like, they'll just not die. But really, that's not even, like... It's not what it is. They still die to everything that kills things in Commander. They still can get bounced... They still... I mean, I guess the best thing that it does is it lets you set up a little army to um, block. That's, I think, the best thing you got going for it. Mm-hmm. And they can just kill your commander anytime, and then you're you're back to square one, where you've got a bunch of tokens that are, you know, killable or whatever. So, yeah, she's just bad, right? I've heard some people say that they think green and green ramp has gotten so strong that... Seven mana or eight mana is nothing to a green deck, but that that doesn't mean you still you just want to play bad cards that cost that much. Yeah, I mean, you'd be much better helming any token deck with something else, or even like just holding up mana for an some way to protect your tokens, honestly, or some sort of other spell in your deck that makes your tokens or creatures otherwise have, you know, some sort of damage prevention or indestructible or something. I, I think she might be a perfect D tier. I think she is definitely a D tier. Yeah. Not as bad as... She does something, unlike these cards, which pretty much don't do anything. Yeah. So I I don't know what this next card is, Eli. You want to help me out? Gabriel Angel Fire. He oh, is this... seven mana for a 4-4 four, four angel. And on your upkeep, you choose Flying, First Strike, Trample, or Rampage 3. It gains that ability until your next upkeep. So I'm curious, Eli, just to, just to quiz you here. Do you know what Rampage does? So Rampage is if it becomes blocked by a creature... It gets rampage three means that it gets plus three plus three until end of turn yes. for each creature yep. blocking it. I believe. I believe that's correct. Yes. So I guess the idea is like if, if that's the unique thing it does. So if you're trying to try to do something on that, you'd want to like l- put lures on it to make all of the creatures block it or something, and then give it trample. But it, it has oh it doesn't have flying. It can give it flying. Don't you like your your seven mana four four angel that doesn't even have flying? Yeah. Well, I mean, interesting thing about Gabriel is that I think it's one of the only male angels in well, on Magic. Well, on Cat, the the angels were male. Are male? Okay. And there's one card called Malak of Dawn from like Future Sight that is a male-looking angel. And I think this one too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I so what it gets first strike, trample, or rampage three, or flying, and it gets it until your next turn. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. F tier. Uh, um, it's seven mana. Yeah, it's seven mana. I, 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 I think I gotta like the the forest walk better, right? Yeah, I think I like Chorus of the Conqueror. Yeah. 
Okay, so now we have Gaddock Teague, and this was the Selesnya deck that I built. Um, and I just built it as a... I, it, it wasn't like a hate bears deck or anything. It was just like, I'm going to build, you know, Selesnya midrange, just play some dudes and hit people. And Gaddock Teague was a commander that I had, and I was like, oh, this makes sense. It's a two-drop. I can fill out my curve with it. Um, and I realized just how much Gaddock Teague shuts down people. Do you want to read what it does, Eli? Yeah, he says non-creature spells with CMC 4 or greater can't be cast, and non-creature spells with X in their mana cost can't be cast. So I think that's super awesome. That shuts off, what do you, what would you say, like 90% of board wipes? Yeah, almost all board wipes. Um, most board wipes that could hit him, especially. I mean, I guess you do have a couple 3 mana ones or, or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but he's really only immune, only going to get killed by single target removal. Um, and he really just, you know, stops a lot of the really powerful things that happen in Commander. Stuff like extra turn spells or, you know, big splashy, you know, big reanimation effects like mass reanimation or, you know, big card draw spells. And that's just coming down on two and being in, on, on the board until someone deals with it. Um, it's going to put a target on its back. And I think if I have a two-mana Commander, I'd like that to get killed more than my Dragonlord Dramoka that I play on turn six, right? Yeah, I think... People with hate bears in Commander have a tendency to overestimate how effective they are at preventing your opponents from actually doing stuff. But I think Gaddock Teague actually kind of lives up to the hype of that. I think he actually does a lot of work. Now, he does hate yourself out a little bit, but, you know, I you can just not play it if you need to play something bigger or just not put it in your deck, I suppose. Um, like, if you want to play, like, your... I don't know, you probably wouldn't play a Harmonize in this deck, but if you did, you know, you could just not play Gaddock Teague in, until turn six, 5 or whatever after you played your Harmonize. Well, I would just assume building Gaddock Teague, you'd probably just mostly play creature spells. You wouldn't. Right? You wouldn't play Harmonize, or you would play, you know, you can still play all of your removal. All of your green and white removal is you less play, than... What's the name of your uh, your elf that you like? Voice, Voice of, of Many. Many. Yeah, that's that's your Harmonize yeah, in that's Gaddock your Teague harmonize. deck. And yeah, all the removal is 3 or less mana. Um, your board wipes, I guess you can't play, but I mean... That's, I mean, that's that's a small price to pay. You can probably swing in a Gaddock Teague at somebody, maybe make a block, then play a board wipe or something, mm -hmm. or blo or chump block something if they're coming after you. So are you feeling S tier or A tier? I'm feeling either top of A, a tier or low S tier. I think maybe top of A tier. I think, I think not S tier for Gaddock Teague, but it is, it is quite a good card that I have a lot of respect for. Yeah. All right, now I don't know what this is. Oh, I do know what this is. This is the plus one, plus one counters, dude. Do you want to... Get Give me the name, Eli. Oh, before we move on, I just want to say this is maybe a bit tangential, but Gaddock Teague kind of looks like Sheldon a little bit. Sheldon Mannery? <laughs> a little bit, a little like, bit. That's kind of cool. Well, I think Gaddock Teague is a bit older than Sheldon. He has, if you look at the art very closely, Sheldon doesn't look that old, Sheldon. You're, you're good, but that's kind of funny. But yeah, up next we have uh, Hamza, Guardian of Ereshin. He's a 6-mana 5-5 five, five Elephant Warrior. It costs 1 less to cast for each creature you control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. And creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it. Yeah, so it's it's a plus one plus one counter deck, obviously, and it's not it's not an enabler um, for the deck. Like it doesn't give you counters, but it's a big payoff for having counters, right? Mm -hmm. So I've never seen anyone play this yet because it's fairly recent. Um, what's that? Was it from Commander Legends? Yeah, I never even saw it in Commander Legends draft or anything, huh? But I mean, so I don't really know what to think of this. Do you want to help me out here, Eli? Give me your opinions. I think this might be one of the one of the better uncommon legends from Commander Legends. I think it seems pretty cool. I mean, you play some counter synergy stuff, and then you just maybe get if he ends up being like a four mana five five and that, makes your creatures cost two less. Like that sounds good to me. Like if you just you can just play something like a Micaeus, right? Lunark or the 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 one yeah Micaeus the Lunark or anything like that. Even like that's uh. Yeah, or like a walking ballista or something, and it just creatures that end up having counters when you they come in or something that I aren't bad I think you just cards. need to have two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control. Yeah, because... Or for, for each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter. Yeah, yeah, so you, you have, have to have, have multiple. Two, two creatures with counters on them, and then you're good, well, I think. Well, I think, I think something that you can probably be doing, like, you might think, okay, I'm not... Like, some people might see this and they might think, I'm going to put all the creatures in there that say, like, two mana one, one enters with a counter or something, mm -hmm. right? I don't think that's what you want to be doing. Yeah. I think, you know, there's better ways for you to um, just play good cards, good creature cards, and then have, like, maybe some creature effects to put counters on stuff. Like, for example, there's um, uh, Rafelos. No, not Rafelos. That's the band card. 
Um, what's the elf that three mana two two? When he enters, you can put a counter on each of up to two creatures you control, and they can tap for mana. Rishkar. Rishkar. Yeah, that's yep. that's very good in this deck because he it makes you can if you curve into a Rishkar, you can play this on turn four very easily because your guys also tap for mana. Rishkar effectively gives you four mana in this deck. Yeah, and um, well, that's actually awesome. And then or like um, oh god, what's the card? It's like a three mana or guy, and when it enters, you can like put. Two counters on any creatures, and then if you give them to your opponent, that you draw a card. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think it's, it's generous patron. Yeah, or something it's from like that. it's from Battle Bond. It's a one four. So you could, if you, let's say you put a counter on itself or something, and then an opponent's creature and draw a card and get a counter on your guys. So mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with this, honestly. And um, just making your uh, just making your like um, your reclamation sage or something cost one mana. You know, maybe the turn you play this or whatever, you can double up on spells. That seems kind of good. So, I kind of like it. I'm thinking like a like a B tier. What do you think, Eli? Like yeah, bottom B tier. Yeah, I'm thinking, thinking, thinking here maybe. Yeah, yeah. I like I like that guy. Maybe that'd be a cool one to build. Now we've got I don't know this 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 lady's name. This lass, Jasmine Boreal, like Boreal Druid. It's a nice Richard Kane Ferguson art. Yeah, she's a five mana four five. She says. Peace must prevail, even if the wicked must die. So it's like when you're playing against a, a bug player in your pod, you know? Yeah, and you're like, sorry, homie. I'm sorry. You gotta go. Peace must prevail. <laughs> I mean, not to beat her on the bush, but definitely somewhere in F tier, right? Um, do you think it's better than... Do you think it's better than this? Do you think it's better than Gabriel? I think it's better than I think it's better than, all... than Chorus of the Con. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have a, rather have a 5-mana 4-5 than a 7-8... Eight mana, eight mana, three eight forest walk, with like no ability. Yeah, oh, that's but sad. But I, I think we should move on. Yeah, I'll just go to the next one. To Kahira, the yeah. orphan guard, costs one and then a hybrid or two hybrid Selesnia. has companion. Uh, so we're, I don't think we need to really mention that for the purposes of this tier list. Yeah, just. Yeah, so it has Vigilance, uh, and it says each other creature you control that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast gets plus one, plus one in Vigi. Um, so, tribal deck, obviously. If it's not, you know, other than the tribal things it does, it does nothing, right? Mm-hmm. So, you can, I think you can look far and wide to find good, or even maybe if you're searching harder, maybe not good, but playable versions of these effects, but I don't think you're going to be doing very so well for yourself. So let's break this down as a commander. So if you're doing Cat Tribal, Arabo is probably better. Mm-hmm. If you're doing Elemental Tribal, uh, why are you playing Selesnia? That's true. You have a lot of other color combinations. Nightmare Tribal. There's You cannot do Nightmare Tribal in Selesnia. I, no. I don't buy it. No. Um, there are some decent dinosaurs or beasts you can play in these colors. Right. So you Dinos, have, yeah. you probably want to be playing Naya. You want to play what's the yeah i know he's trample one? uh um oh god what is his name the big dinosaur guy you know the Gishath. one. Gishath. 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 yes beast tribal maybe you got something there right i don't think there's maybe other another beast matters thing but the problem with this card is that it really doesn't do anything for a tribal deck it's just an anthem and vigilance which is good it's something i think it's fine it's a good anthem for three mana but that's it. Just feels kind of boring too. So I'm gonna probably say C tier. Yeah, but I'm gonna go. Well, it is three mana, but I don't know, man. What do you think about above or below Jermoka here? I probably below. Yeah. Unfortunately, but that's how it goes. Now we've got um, one of the gods, two color gods from Theros block, Carmetra, God of Harvests. Um, she's a five mana six seven with indestructible. And she's not a creature unless your devotion to white and uh, green is less than seven. Um, so that means the, the the pips, the colored symbol, the mana symbols on their casting costs. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you can uh, search your library for a forest or plains and put it in the battlefield tapped. So, I mean, in a lo- any game that lasts longer than, you know, six or seven turns, it's going to be getting significant value, getting a lot of lands out of your deck, right? Yeah, that trigger is very strong. I think we've talked before on the podcast about this design. It's more of a modern thing of when when X draw a card, and usually that X is a very basic game function. Yeah, she becomes when do basic function, get a land into play. Yeah, and that's very good too. Yeah, 
So, you know, I hold the fork down while I grab my laptop charger because I'm low on battery. Very cool. But yeah, I think she is very strong. Five mana is a. Uh, it's pretty affordable, especially since she has indestructible. So if they don't counter it, you're probably pretty safe to keep Karametra in play. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, I think Karametra is pretty powerful for sure. Um, let me think. Um, she's got to be at least A tier, right? I think she's a solid A tier. Like here? Yeah. Do you think she's better than Dragonlord uh, Dromoka? Probably. Yeah. I love Dragonlord Dromoka, but that's just so many lands. Like, you know, we, we might talk sometimes about how just kind of ramp for ramp's sake, like, isn't that great, but it, you're getting that off of just playing creatures, so... You could probably not even play that much ramp in that deck and still end up with, like, over 10 lands. Multi you get multiple per turn, especially if you're playing, like, you know, just you play good cards like Reclamation Sage and stuff like that. I love mentioning that card because it's, my, like, my favorite green card, honestly. But, and it just can't really die, honestly. It Once you play it on 5 or on four, man, four turn 4, it sticks around for the rest of the game. And if you're playing a lot of creatures, that's going to turn on her Devotion, and she's mm -hmm. a 6-7. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, she blocks her attacks forever, so... Yeah, quite good. Oh god, who is this guy? You better say this one, Spencer. This is uh, K Takahashi. Um, from, I would imagine, uh, from Kamigawa. But that border doesn't look like Kamigawa. What is this from? I think this is an old Legends card. Legends card. card. Huh. But uh, he's a uh, 4 mana 2 four. Tap, prevent the next 2 damage that would be able to target creature this turn. He's just a 2-2, two -two, actually. Oh, that's what I meant. I'm sorry. But... Yeah. So... Our second uh, damage prevention commander here. Uh, I don't think damage prevention is a viable strategy in any format of the game. Especially not commander. I'm going to go with D for damage prevention. <laughs> yeah, bottom of D for damage prevention. I'm going to go with that. Um, oh, baby. Up next, we have all your, uh, pretty much all your devotion for Karametra. Yeah, there you go. Kron the Dawnclad costs three green, three white. It's a 6-6 six, six flying and vigilance. And whenever it attacks, if it's enchanted, exile target permanent. So, one thing to mention with this card is, you know, it's it's pretty solid with uh, Nykthos, because it, yeah. it, it's enough devotion on its own to make it even, but... And I know we, we, we don't use we shouldn't really mention this, but I really like the art of this card, because it's just this blindfolded dude holding a, a scale or whatever. Well, Archons almost always look cool. I know, they are... Like, there's what? There's the big Archon where things can't attack, that one looks cool mm -hmm. too, but whatever... Um, I, like, we did say that it's got to be better than Dromoka, right? Because Dromoka was, we, we gave it ups for being a 5-mana 7-7 seven, seven, or 5-mana 6-6, six, six, right? Maybe it's not better than Dromoka. Hmm. It is harder to cast. Oh, it's more mana, too. Oh, never mind. I think it's definitely better than Dromoka. Okay. But not um, by much. Well, I think maybe being able to exile a permanent is pretty good. That being said, that's very, very telegraphed. And since you have to enchant, enchant it, it that becomes the perfect time to go for the... The kill on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's very hard to cast. I mean, it's not insanely hard to cast, I guess. Once you get to that level, that, that amount of mana, you know, if you just have two, two dual land kind of cards and the rest are basics, like, you pretty much can cast it. Mm -hmm. This is just not the kind of deck where you want to be playing utility lands that have for colorless mana, I suppose, which is kind of a downside. Yeah, like I, I bet somebody could make a... A good, good deck. deck, but I think it's probably, probably like a, a Voltron deck yeah. and an Aura Enchantress type of deck, which have a lot of pitfalls. Um, we do like Vigilance. Vigilance is strong, but like, I just don't. I don't see myself being pulled in the direction of uh, Celestia Auras and then going with this instead of one of the other options, right? Yeah. So I, I think maybe C tier. Do you think maybe the top of C tier right here? Yeah. I think that's that's good for for Krond. But if you want to play it for the art, go Ella, by all means. Now we have Lady Calaria. She is a 7 mana, 3 6. Tap her, deal 3 damage to target attacking or blocking creature. You know, on a smaller creature, on like a cheaper creature, that's actually like a really strong ability, honestly. I, I, I do think that that kind of archer effect is pretty good. Yeah, maybe on like a 4 mana creature. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. But um, One other thing. It says she's a human archer. Look at her ears. She's clearly like an elf or something. Oh, she is an elf for sure. What the hell? Somebody. 
Oh, um, it's it's uh it's retcon to elf archer and okay. the uh, we're, we're and good. The orc we're text. good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. I guess they just didn't have elves at that point. No, they did. Cause, okay. I guess they just messed up. But how do you feel about? I mean, she does something, right? Do you think she's better than all these F tier cards? Seven mana is a lot. I mean, I think she's uh, probably middle F tier. I don't. Do you want to put uh, her below uh, the five drop here? Because seven mana. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if there's much value in us arguing about like the. Yeah. Sure, we'll move on. Whether or not the the terrible like card that does something is like better or worse than the almost <laughs> on par like vanilla creature from. <laughs> the... <laughs> All right. I don't know. Now we've got Lathiel, the bountless, the bounteous, 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 the, the bounteous dawn. Yeah, it's another unicorn for your uh, Emil deck, <laughs> but it's a four mana two two with lifelink, and it says at the end of your end step, if you gained life this turn, distribute up to that many counters, plus and plus one counters, on, among any number of creatures on the battlefield. And it's uh, each end step. Oh, not your end step. So like if you I have said. like a soul sister or something, you can get. Maybe a couple life, couple counters. All right, all right. I'm not, I'm not upset yeah, with that. That's not terrible. That's probably a pretty good life gain card. It does have that thing which I like for my life gain um, commanders, where it does have a way to gain life on itself. It has life link. So, for example, I'm sure Eli, you've had that situation where you've played an Archangel of Thune, and you haven't had any life gain effects, and it just, oh, not that scary. And then you just attack with it and get the one trigger. That's right. Good enough. It, it happens. Um, and this immediately um, makes me think like. I mean, I'm not sure if there's really any other life gain commanders for these colors. Um, that being said, this is actually probably one of the better life gain commanders I would I, expect. I like that you can split up that those counters. Like, yeah. it doesn't all have to be on one creature. So if you have, like, some soul sisters or something and you gain, like, three life, you can be like, this is a 2-2, two, two, this is a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. Um... Because, you know, you might think, I just want to put them all on my commander because then when it gains me life, when it attacks or blocks or whatever, they can't really attack into you, I guess... Because if you chump, you gain life, and then on your end step, put a bunch of counters on things. Mm -hmm. um, you do have that slight political advantage of being able to put counters on opponents' things. Maybe if you, maybe you play Emil, not Emil, Lathiel as a um, some sort of a what's the artifact where you can't untap your creatures if they're big. Oh, Meek Stone. Maybe you play it as a Meek Stone oh. deck, and you only give your opponents counters, <laughs> or uh, you play like the board wipes still and kill big creatures. That um, maybe I'm maybe I'm stretching a bit too far for this, but there's some interesting stuff there. I'm I'm feeling a B tier. Sure. Um, you want to go above or below? I'm thinking somewhere in here, right? Better, maybe better than Amara, right? Or no? Uh, I like Amara. A Ma two drop, two drop pride, two drop privilege. Yeah, maybe above Hamza. Yeah, I'm surprised. To remember that guy's name? He's cool though. He's epic. More legends or something? Okay, this is probably the best legends commander yet. It's Lord Magnus. He is 6 mana for a 4-3 with first strike, and creatures with planeswalk or forest walk may be blocked as though they did not have either ability. So that's a direct counter to uh, the, the course of the, the Conclave. Course of the conclave. Yeah, so yeah. you're going to want to pack your Lord Magnus <laughs> in the post-Yavamaya Cradle of Growth or whatever that card's called. I, world. <laughs> I, I think I might rather have this over a I think I might rather have a five mana four three first strike over a five mana four five. Do you think so? I I wanna give him top of F tier. Yeah, sure. I'm down. It's kinda cool. Alright, let's let's just move on from I don't even know what that art is. Oh, it's him in like a weird suit of armor. Yeah, and his brain's like showing out if you if you zoom in on that. It's weird. He is really weird. Although I think that's actually probably just the wrapping that he has around his head. But uh, very epic. Now we have Maja, Bredegard Protector. She is a 5 mana 2 3, gives your other creatures plus and plus 1, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1 1 white human creature token. So remember remember um, when we were talking about um, this uh, Cat Beast commander? This is kind of like, I mean, granted it is 2 more mana, but this is kind of that and doesn't give vigilance, but this is kind of the same thing, but with Landfall Make a Dude. So, that, landfall make a dude's pretty, pretty good. Pretty something, right? Like that's. I mean, it's not like crazy, but like it, it is something. I don't know what's the value of like landfall make a dude. Like what kind of how much do they charge for that usually on a on like an enchantment or a creature. Probably three like, mana or something. You got that one from 
Zendikar, Fel- Felidar, uh, whatever. Yeah, Felidar retreat that That's makes it two mana. two. So maybe like two and, or one and mana. These are technically two or three mana. These are technically two twos if she's in oh, play. So, so that, yeah, that, she's that's okay. valuable. Pretty good for an uncommon. Yeah, I think I, maybe like C tier. Yeah, maybe top of C tier. Yeah, top of C tier. Yeah, I, I you know being rewarded for playing your land seems all right to me. And I mean, granted, like this is probably a uh, worse. Um, probably worse, uh, you know, like, go-wide uh, token strategy than Am- Amara, I think, down here, but um, that's fine. You can have worse versions of the effect. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's not even strictly worse. Like, it's not necessarily that, but... I got Miri, right? Yeah, Miri. Miri. Weatherlight Duelist. See, three mana, three two, with first strike. Whenever Miri attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat, and as long as Miri is tapped, no more than one creature can attack you each combat. So that's really cool. That's like, there's this old enchantment called uh, Dueling Grounds, I think, from like way back, and it's the same mana cost where only one creature can attack and one creature can block each combat. Mm-hmm. And so she's pretty cool. I'm a, like, you know, any creature, this obviously like lends itself to being some sort of like a Voltron-ish, you know, maybe not Voltron, but like equipment or auras or something kind of effect because it's a 3-2 with first strike, so it's not going to be really overcome in combat if it's got if it's suited up a little bit and then they can't really get you um with like double blocks or whatever and then they can't attack you for more than one creature each turn so i, I mean it does the strategy like like it, it's very on the face about what it does like it's not it's very honest with itself and i think it does it all right i kind of like it for for go wide too because yeah they, then they only get one block if you attack with, like, four or five creatures. Oh, I didn't even consider that. And then you're free to attack people pretty much unless anybody has, like, one big creature because then they can only swing into you with one creature. Mm-hmm. So I think she's a really good combat-based commander. Maybe, like, a top of B tier? Sure. Um, you think you think above uh, the Caddo? I think Maybe. She's three mana. She's I will... I will, um... I will... I don't know much about Miri, so I'll just, uh... You know, default to your opinion on on uh, him, her, him, her. I'm not quite sure. Cat, um, cat self, on that one. So now we'll go on to Nazan, revered bladesmith. This is uh, another one from the uh, cycle from what was his Ari Aribo Aribo. Yeah, Miri and Nazan are both from the Aribo pre. Yeah, and Nazan um, is you know most commonly played with his hammer that's what he's most known for right so he's got this ability where he's a six mana five four and when he enters the battlefield you can get yourself an equipment search your library for an equipment put it in your hand and if you get hammer of nazan this way you can put it on the battlefield otherwise you know you put it in your hand then shuffle your library and then he also says when an equipped creature you control attacks you may tap target creature defending player controls do you want to eli just explain what hammer nazan does so hammer of the nazan is a four mana equipment that and when it enters it or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, it auto equips to a creature you control, and then the hammer gives plus two plus zero and indestructible to the equipped creature. And its equip cost is four, four, but you don't often have to pay that unless something die it die. I mean, it gives indestructible to the creature or whatever, mm-hmm. so it's hard for it to die. Um, so that like like most of the time, I think you're going to want to be getting the hammer, right? Just because you cheat mana that way. Yeah, get the hammer first, or if you have the hammer in play, or. You can go and get something else. And you all of a sudden put it on the battlefield, then it puts it onto your commander, and then it has indestructible or whatever. So that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, though, you can just kind of toolbox out your whatever equipment you need at the time. So I, I'm not trying to do like the, uh, the the thing people do with green cards, where like, oh, this should have been a white card, or this should have been an X card. I get why they made this card in the cat deck, because in Mirrodin, where a lot of the cats are from, because when they made this deck, they're actually weren't that many cats to like make a full commander deck out of but a lot of the ones you had had some level of equipment synergy because that's the the theme on mirrodin with the cat people yeah and they were in those they were in those colors white and white and green right yeah so it makes sense that they wanted to make an equipment matters commander for that deck to feed in with a lot of those equipment matters cats which they just kind of had to put in there yeah but this is the kind of card i would have liked to seen as a uh like a mono white or a boros commander because those are the colors that care most about equipments. Maybe the, maybe it'd be more fitting as a that uh, color combination. But 
Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't really have any um, Boros equipment commanders at the time this came out, right? They didn't come out until afterwards. Right. And nowadays, we're like, we're good, so we're yeah. fine. But this, if they made a similar card to this, like, because this card reminds me kind of of Godo, where it, you know, does the thing, tutors an equipment into play, and gets that kind of card advantage. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if we could see a, a white or a Boros version of that, that'd be awesome. That being said, I think if you're wanting to play a Celestia equipment deck, this is probably one of your best choices, right? Maybe not. Yeah. But I, I think that's got to be true, right? Just because it's so cool. And it's nice that that exists, too. If people want to do equipments in Selesnya, they should have the option to do that. Yeah, and once you once you get your Hammer of Nazan in play, like all of your equipment just become auto-equips when you play them. That is powerful. Mm-hmm. So I want to give um, Nazan like a like an A tier. Is that crazy? I want to put him like here. Is that, is, that, is that wrong, you think? I could see that. Yeah, I think I just think he's the good. hammer is really good. The ham hammers on is a is a good card. You know, I'm surprised. Um, before we move on to the next thing, I'm just I didn't expect there to be as many good Selesnya commanders. Um, at least you know solid ones that we have in B or above as we've been having. Right. That being said, we might break our record for most F tiers in this one. <laughs> yeah, they they have a, a lot of solid cards and a lot of bad ones. Maybe that's the case, but. So everybody knows this guy. It's Riz the Redeemed. Mm -hmm. One mana, either green or white, for a 1-1 Elf Warrior. You can pay three mana, tap him, create a 1-1 green and white Elf Warrior creature token, or pay six mana, tap him. For each creature token you control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. So you double your tokens on that, yeah. So this is like the go-to tokens commander that everybody loves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's got that... It's got that kind of... It deserves its spot because... The one mana commanders, you know, you don't see those too often, and they are powerful for being one mana commanders. Mm-hmm. So it's got that that bumps it up a lot in my book. One of the coolest things I've seen with Reese the Redeemed is you play Reese, and then on turn three you make a one one. Turn four you play what's it called Natural Order, where you sacrifice a green creature and, and search a green creature into play. Yeah, and you search like Vorinclex into play with that. Sure, and that's just like a pretty good and consistent play pattern. Yeah, because you just have that early command, that early. You always get the one one. Yeah, because you all you just like get to make the token to have something to sacrifice. That's cool. Um, well, I don't know about cool, but it's something you can do. Um, Riss just has to be like good, like has to be up there, right? Just because of its, you know, propensity and its. I mean, these days it's not as popular, I don't think. But back in the day, this was like a go-to commander. Yeah. That being said, though, I'm pretty. I'm kind of a hater on token decks. I'm a little down on them because mm-hmm. there's just a lot of a lot of bounce, and you know, they get hit by board wipes just as hard, if not. You lose out on some of like the great like board protection spells, like you know, indestructible in tone of turn is good, but it's not as great as people think. Like in the cyclonic rift, like toxic deluge yeah. type of commander meta that it is nowadays. So you can't, like, eerie interlude your creatures out. You pretty much have, like, Teferi's Protection. Yeah. That new one from Adventures in Forgotten Realms. You've got to really use your... you got to use your... I mean, yeah, against Bounce, you don't only really have many... Many... Just those two, two effects you were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, for Board Wipes, you do have your... Access to your green protection spells. Like, um, namely... Um, Heroic Intervention is the right. best one. You're good at, on like, Indestructible yeah. until end of turn. But, but I think, Bounce is hard. I think Indestructible until end of turn, as far as like a like board wipe prevention, often just doesn't... It's not Do quite enough. good enough. Yeah, you're, you you get owned by, you know, um, negative one, negative one effects, I suppose, as well. Because you can't blink them, like you said. That being said, though, I, I can't see Riss being below a B tier, right? It's not a C tier commander, I don't think. I think, yeah, it's B tier. Yeah, I, I mean... Where do you think it fits in B-Tier? Maybe better than Dritz? Better than the cat? Better than this cat? A lot of cats here. Let's, let's do top of B-Tier. Sure. It's, it's, it uh, would be probably pretty crazy to put Riss it's, below It's these. one of your S-Tier token commanders. Sure. And it's got to be like better than any of the other token commanders that you've seen so far. And maybe we'll see. Maybe maybe not, though. But I yeah. think it's the best tokens commander, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, now we've got Safi, Eric's daughter. Which, if I can go off on a tangent real quick... I hate that these cards are, like, phonetically spelled. Like, it's Eric's daughter, D-O-T-T-E-R, and um, Han- Hans, Eric's son, is, like, spelled not Eric's. It's spelled, like, in a dumb way. So I'm just... That that already gets a minus grade for me so far. 
But you want to tell me what that card does, Eli? She's a 2-mana two 2-2, two two, and you can sacrifice Safi. When target creature is put into your graveyard this turn, return that card to the battlefield. Mm-hmm. So she is kind of a infamous green-white combo commander. Mm-hmm. They're a combo deck for sure. And, and I'm a sucker for anything that combos with, like, Sun Titan, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, that is, I mean, that is a fun thing to do. Like, I do like me a Sun Titan. But, I mean, maybe it's not a fun thing to do, right? Like, that's pr- that's pretty, it's pretty telegraphed when you play a Safi deck, right? Mm-hmm. Like, everyone knows that you're going to be comboing with something. Or if you're not comboing with something, like, what, I guess you're just, like, getting some value from getting your creature back? Yeah, and that's not, that's not terrible. Bad. I mean, it's obviously a good card, but I don't like it that much. Mm-hmm. Not because of like power level, I just don't really appreciate what it does very much. Mm-hmm. But that being said, it obviously is good. So I don't really have a lot to say about it. Maybe I'll just hand that over to you if you want to maybe discuss it a little more. Yeah, I don't know. Um, really, aside from combo stuff, what that uh that deck looks like. I guess you play some sack outlets and just some value stuff, and maybe recur some abilities or. Repeat, enter the battlefield, triggers. I guess maybe you want some ways to return it from your graveyard to your hand so that it doesn't always um, cost two more mana every time you want to try to get that ability off if you're playing like a value plan. Yeah. Like some regrowth effects or something, or maybe even just like, I guess, the Sun Titan, like you said, to bring it back from the graveyard. Or um, what's the... Uh, oh, God. Is it the, the, the small Revel Arc? Does that only get one drops? Yeah, that just gets power uh, one or less. Power one, oh, yeah. power one or less? That doesn't hit this. The Vesper Lark. Vesper Lark. Hmm. Well, I mean, obviously it's good, right? So it has to be up somewhere. Maybe A tier? Yeah, I don't know. Like here? Yeah. I, I just... It's good. I just don't want to put it higher because I don't like it too much. <laughs> that That's a bit selfish, but it's my tier list and I'll put it where I want it's, to. Speaking of good, but we don't like it too much. I, I don't know how you feel about Selvala Explorer Return. But she is a 3-mana 2-4. She has Parlay, so you tap her, and each player reveals the top card of their library. For each non-land card you reveal, you add a green mana to your mana pool and gain one life. Then each player draws a card. Mm -hmm. So this can potentially tap for 4 mana, gain you 4 life. On average, it's probably 2 mana. 2.5, whatever. 3 maybe if you count like like the, the... Amount of lands people have in their decks probably closer to forty percent or something. Yeah, but then each player draws a card, which is not amazing. I don't like giving my opponents cards. I don't like everyone having more cards. Oftentimes, so I know there's some stuff you can do with um, the equipment. You know where you untap uh, and pay three and untap it, untap the equipped creature. So. You probably end... I think, on average, you're able to draw everyone's decks and kill them. Potentially, she can do some really abusive stuff. Especially if you can have ways to make it... I think there's some effects where if you add mana, if a permanent you control adds mana, like, you can add more. It right. might only be... No, it might not be in these colors, but... I think any creature that can tap for multiple mana is just kind of prone to those sort of combos. Yeah. That um, being said, she draws your opponents into interaction along the way, probably. So. Um, but she probably is the, um, like in Selesnya at least, the commander that costs the least, that generates the most mana. Like, I can't think of any other three drop that generates, you know, somewhere between zero and four mana, um, the turn after, ex- I mean, without any setup, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously you have, like, the other Selvala and some other things, but those require some setup, right? So you could just, theoretically, just go, like, Selvala on three into turn four having... Six mana, seven mana, yeah. five mana, four mana. <laughs> yeah, I do think she's strong. Mm-hmm. You think maybe B tier? Yeah. Above I... Miri? Sure, we'll do that. I mean, it might be crazy to put her below this Dragonlord Dramoka, but I mean, I just, yeah, not a big fan of giving my opponents cards. And I'm, I'm just counting the life gain. I don't think that matters too much. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's something, of course. Like, life gain's important, but yeah, I don't know. Pe- right. Yeah. Yeah. How about Shalai, Voice of Plenty? Four mana, three, four, flying. You, Planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have Hexproof, and you can pay six mana to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So, I've never seen Shalai as a commander myself. She usually just shows up in decks. And she's pretty solid when she's in a deck, because doing doing that thing where you protect all your creatures, 
Most notably, your commander from targeted removal is pretty powerful. But when she's your commander, I don't know if, like, I don't, like, you're not, you're only protecting the creatures in your deck, not, like, a commander that your deck's built around. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a knock, that might be a little bit of a knock against it. That being said, I do think, like, she's a good card, she's a solid body, and she has a mana uh, outlet that lets you, you know, spend your excess mana. So, you know, what do you have to say about Shalai? Yeah, I think she's a very solid kind of mid-range kind of card. Yeah. And I don't have much to say about it. I've seen her do pretty good things, but like you said, I've never seen her as a commander. There's a you mentioned that she's like a mid-range um card and I and I do agree with that. I guess you could play her as like a aggro deck and then when you get to 6 mana you pump up your team. But, like, I don't I don't know about that. But, like, as a mid-range deck, I think I would prefer to play some of the other cards on this list, notably ones that have more power or the ones that give you card advantage. Like, we haven't got there yet, but Yasharn is later on as yeah, another 4-drop. Yeah, that's what I think. So I think I would put this below, like, where Yasharn would go, and I don't know where I'd put him, but I want to give this, like, a... A middle B tier. A maybe. middle B tier, maybe, like, right below Dritz or something. Yeah. Or is he cool with that? Yeah. Sure. Not not a bad card by any means, but more more common in the ninety nine for sure. Mm -hmm. Oops. Um, now we have I think this is Shalai, right? No, Shauna, not Shalai. What is Shalai? Is that the one we just did? I'm crazy right now. Shalai is this one. Okay, Shauna Sisse's Legacy. Um, this is a two mana zero zero, and it has uh, can't be the target of abilities your opponent controls, which is a little bit strange not uh can still be targeted by spells just not abilities so like if they play like a ravenous chupacabra or something like that it can't be killed by it um and it gets plus one plus one for each creature you control so it's uh, I, a small story um for me when i first started playing magic back in the uh m13 era one of my favorite cards was um crusader of odric which is a three mana um, creature that had power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. That kind of go wide thing. It just that was always a fun card, and I just remember loving like the art of that card and like, mm -hmm. playing it in my casual decks. Um, and this kind of harkens back to that for me, so that makes me kind of um, have some some love for it. Um, so I'm I'm already pretty happy about this card. What do you think, Eli, about um, Shana? I just I don't think it uh... does anything. I don't think she really does anything. That's the problem, right? <laughs> uh, Same with Crusader Bodrick. Doesn't really do anything. Yeah. So I don't know if I would ever make that as a commander. Yeah. Could be nice. I don't know. Yeah, if you if you like that sort of thing, but I'm I don't I'm almost feeling like a like a D tier on this one. Dang. It is two mana though, but I mean it just doesn't really do anything. How long does it take for that to be like a relevant size? So, you play it on 2. Most of the time, it's probably a 1-1. One, one. Yep. Turn 3, you probably play a creature. Maybe you don't. Maybe you play a Cultivate. So, let's say turn 5, it's maybe a 4-4? Four, four? So, what's like your, what's like your, like, like, let's say you're building, like, a deck to, like, to, like, get big, whatever. Maybe you play, like, a, this on turn 2, a ramp on turn 3, then on turn 4, you play, like, a, a Deep Forest Hermit or something and make it, like, a 6-6 six, six or something. Yeah, and that's I not very good, right? I don't, not, I don't, I don't think love that's... it because, like, let's say I have my six six Shauna and I attack into somebody who has like a five five, and they destroy one of my better creatures and mm -hmm. then trade in. I don't know. No, I don't think I'm. I'm not trying to make an argument for it. I'm just trying to think about what it does. Yeah, I, it's it's can't be targeted by abilities your opponent controls. I think is probably not very relevant. Yeah, I, don't I think I it's... think that. Much. Almost never comes up. I mean, sometimes, like, you have, like, it, no one can, like, steal it. Like, they can't active trees in it. Or they mm -hmm. can active trees in it, but they can't, like, play the creature, like, Zealous Conscripts or something. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I want to give it, I want to give it, like, either the bottom of C tier or, like, up here. But, I don't know. It's a card. We'll do this for now. I mean, it is a two drop and it does get big, but when, late game, like, when you play it, the best thing about a two drop is, you know, your board gets wiped, you can play your commander back again. Then you just play it for four, and it's a one-one. Yeah. So not 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 too happy with that, I guess. Um, now we have uh, Siddhar Kondo of Jamura. Um, this is a partner commander, and the way that we do these um, is we 
factor how this card would be for a Celestia deck. So, well, you know, this partnered with maybe another green or white uh, mm -hmm. partner commander. Um, so it does get bonus points for being a partner, just um, only in the context of a Celestia deck. Mm -hmm. So do you want to read this, Eli? Yeah, he is a 2-5 with flanking. So flanking is whenever a creature without flanking blocks this creature. The blocking creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Yep, and it's got four mana. And he says, creatures your opponents control without flying or reach can't block creatures with power two or less. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit confusing, I think, to figure out what he does, right? Because so he, so he says your small dudes have pseudo flying, right? They have pretty much flying, mm -hmm. not for blocking, only for attacking. And if they block with their guys, they get smaller. Uh, just blocking him. Oh, just him? Oh, it's only yeah. on him. Yes. Okay. So I'm not, I guess it's supposed to be just like an evasive, like get in with your small dudes that have effects when they hit people deck? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you do with... Uh... Like, if you play your, um... Your, uh... Well, I'm trying to think. Like, your your Orin, um Frostfang things, where they hit... You know, your creatures can't be blocked, then you draw a card when they hit them, I guess, or something like that. There's really not a ton of those, though, are there? No, like, like I you mean... you play the deck with, like, most of them, and, like, Toski... as far as just green, like... Yeah, you have more of them now with Toski, but... You can do some somewhat cute stuff, like with, uh... The two mana renowned creature that when it hits somebody you get to get the equipment from your deck. Yeah. I'm not really uh I'm not really sold on Sidar Kondo, right? I'm not so I think it might be another D tier. Dang, yeah, I mean do you think it's do you think it's worse than Yeah, it might be. I'm gonna go above Shauna though. Is that fair? Yeah. I, it's it is a two five for four, and that is a good butt to block, right? Mm hmm And they it is kinda hard to block itself. That being said, I don't think you really want to suit this up, right? Because then it... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Moving on, we got Sigarda, Huron's Grace. Is Huron a place? Is that a thing? What does that mean? That is a type of bird. Oh, okay. Because you see her staff oh, there. Oh, it's, that's like, like, it's her, like a big crane or something. That's her thing. She's the... Herons are kind of like a sacred bird on Innistrad. Okay. They're Thank like... you. Thank you for being the Innistrad lore master <laughs> for me, Eli. Yeah, and that's like her symbol. So yeah, she's a 5-mana 4-5, Flying Angel. You and humans you control have Hexproof, and you can pay 2-mana, exile a card from your graveyard to create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. So yeah, she's uh, she's the human tribal Selesnia mm -hmm. commander. I actually had a Sigarda human tribal Selesnia deck years and years ago, and it was kind of okay. But yeah, Sigarda doesn't... I mean, giving your humans hexproof is nice, but it's kind of like Shalai. I was going to say, how, how do we, you kind of can compare it to Shalai in the fact that it does, it gives itself hexproof too, so that's better than Shalai in that sense, but it only works for it and humans, right? Well, she doesn't give herself uh, hexproof. Oh, sorry, you and humans. Yeah, you, so you it, and so humans. It's, it's like... It's like pretty much exactly Shalai then. So it's, yeah, it's kind of worse Shalai. I mean, different stat line, uh, different Dif ability. It's got one more power and toughness, and it's got a... It's got a um, ability to make tokens for two mana, which is kind of nice. Like, I kind of built it as like a green white reanimator deck, so it wasn't really helped by Sigarda. Like, I guess it protected like some pieces, but I mostly just wanted to do the uh, Angel of Glory Rise thing, where you return all your humans from the graveyard to the battlefield. Now, I might be crazy here, but I kind of want to put it one above Shalai, just because I kind of like its ability to make one ones. I don't know if that's super crazy though. I mean, it's kind of it's a good mana sink. Like it's and kinda, it's bigger itself. Right? I maybe compare it to like Verena, you know, where I I built the Verena deck and you just hold up two mana, and you can make a two two. So if she's two mana, exile one card, make a one one. So uh, mm -hmm. it's good to have mana sinks. And uh, I don't know if she's just bigger than Shalai. I know Shalai has the ability to pump your team, which is very powerful. But do you hate this here? Or do you think it's def it's below? I think I think I like Shalai a little bit better. Sure. Do you think it's below these guys then, or do you think it's like right below? Yeah, I think she might be below the rest of them. I think she's still C tier though, or still B tier. I mean, is that yeah. crazy? Yeah, I think B tier. Sure, bottom of B tier there. I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a card. I like the card. It looks cool, and it's got very cool art. And I had not seen that really until today. I'd never. 
until we made the list or whatever. I had only known of the other Sigarda. Mm-hmm. Speaking of other Sigarda. Yeah, we have Sigarda, Host of Herons. Five mana, five, five, angel, flying, hexproof, spells and abilities your opponents control can't cause you to sacrifice permanence. So I'm usually pretty pretty down on Voltron, but I think she's like one of the one of the OGs, one of the ultimate Voltron commanders, because she can't get edicted. Yeah. You pretty much have to like board wipe her away. Yeah, you can't target her and you can't uh, edict her. Um and you know, not just edicts, but like people will play other things that cause you to sacrifice uh, things like board wipes. Um, what's the one board wipe where um, five mana one where you, you choose their things and then you can... Tragic Arrogance? Yeah, Tragic Arrogance is a great, uh, one of the best board wipes in white. And this makes you pretty much immune to your opponent's Tragic Arrogance, which is nice. Um, like you said, Eli, I think the best thing about it is definitely going to be the fact that it, it's a big body with flying and hexproof. So like it lends itself to like either a... Um, equipment based deck or a you know Voltron Enchantress deck maybe mm-hmm. because uh, if you're going to try to go for an Enchantress strategy like and your win con is going to be suiting up with the auras because you can do Enchantress strategies with auras or like you know more of the go wide kind of like make tokens kind of thing make like angel tokens if you're going to do auras like having a commander with hexproof and uh, evasion is a pretty good uh, pretty good rate I think um and it's bigger than uh, most uh, most uh, five mana commanders as well too. It's big. Kind of, I, I like her a lot. I mean, would you say uh, like maybe bottom of A tier? I'm I'm down with it. I might even put her above. No, I might put her here. I maybe. Would, yeah. I think yeah. I think you could do that. I think Sigarda is just a. You could just play her as a like a like we were talking before about like a mid range deck with Shalai. I think a mid range Sigarda deck just being like a big creature maybe you could give it lifelink or something or just play like good removal spells and good value cards mm-hmm. and then just be able to have this big kind of kind of immovable object that can just hit people seems pretty cool if you if you give it like a now i'm not suggesting that you necessarily play this but if you give it a sword or give it like an unflinching courage or something it does get it to that magical seven number yep. where it can three shot people so she's quite good yeah now we have uh siona Captain of Pileus. No, Pileus. Pil- the P- Captain of the Pileus. I don't know how you pronounce that, but... Uh, Pileus? Pileus? Yeah, Pileus looks right, because she's, um... She's got to be... Is she Theros-born? Yeah. Yeah, she's from Theros. Um, th- so this is a commander that I've kind of seen... One thing that's interesting about it is this is an uncommon commander. I think this is one of the better... Um, if you're playing, um, like, a kind of a popper deck... And I'm not saying popper EDH, because popper EDH allows you to um, play any um, two-color, or any, what, two-color non-legendary creature, right? Or maybe not just well, two-color? You can play any uncommon legendary uncommon Yeah, creature. sorry, that's what I was thinking. And this, um, you know, is, is a legendary creature, so, you know, you have, it's there's better choices maybe in the non-legendary creature section, but it does allow you to do a common, like a popper combo deck, because you're able to do the... Oh god, I can't remember the card's name, but there's a. Do you remember? What I, do you like? Do you remember at all the, what I'm thinking of? No. Okay. There's a combo there, you can do with this in Popper. Yeah, there's. I, a, know, I know the card that combos with her, and I thought it was a rare. There's an aura, um, and a, uh, uh, and a little white creature that make lets you make, uh, um, infinite one ones in uh, Popper, I believe. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's better than I thought then, because I I knew the um the three mana aura that gives indestructible, and when. A creature enters the battlefield you can move it over to that creature so what what she says is when she enters the battlefield look the top seven cards of your library you may reveal an aura card from among them put in your hand put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order and whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a creature you control create a one one white human soldier creature token so seven deep um i feel like that hits probably most of the time if you're playing enough auras you hit a lot seven deep is a lot that is a lot so if you're like have like fifteen or twenty auras, I don't do the math yet, but it's probably somewhere around eighty plus percent, probably more than that. Yeah. So she's mostly ETB draw a card, and then create one ones whenever you do your aura stuff. Mm-hmm. And like we said, she's got a couple of ways to make infinite creatures with certain auras. Well, I don't think it's with. I think it's just a. I think it's just a combo an aura combo in Popper, and then she just is a way for you to. Um, 
to to get it because you can like tutor the top seven. I think okay. that might be it. Just I don't think it's for it. Yeah, I don't think it's with her abilities. Okay. I think it's just the a couple com yeah. But whatever. I just remember because at one point I was trying to build a popper deck, and this was one of the ones that I was kind of building on tapped out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's pretty hard to build a popper deck, by the way. I'm looking for creatures and stuff that are decent, but Siona's kind of cool. Um, one of the better uncommon commanders, I'd say, right? Yeah, I like her a lot. I think um, I we got so many B tiers. Yeah, I kind of want to put her in C tier just because of that. Top of C tier. I'm I'm feeling that. Are you cool with that? Yeah. All right. Who's the next guy we got? Sir Shanlar of Eberin. He's a six mana four seven. Remember, Sir Shandler. Remember and stand firm. Rallying cry of the Eberin militia. What does that mean? It means remember him. Okay. He must have been pretty good. Must have been a pretty based commander, I guess. He's got pretty based art. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's a 4-7 for 6. Welcome to F tier. Right. This is like the Suicide Squad. He... What does this one do? Put him oh, this, bo- is the, this is the Archer. Put him above uh, Jasmine Boreal, because you remember Sir Chandler. Yeah, he does. You I remember mean, and you stand firm. Jasmine Boreal looks so cool, though. She does. He looks cool, too, though. Yeah. He's like a knight guy. All right, well, now we have a um, new card from Modern Horizons 2, Sithist Harvest's Hand. Now, this is a two-mana, one-two um, enchantment creature, and it says whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you gain one life and draw a card. So this is just like a better enchantress in the command zone, right? Yeah, and I know we... Or at least I hate on the win X draw card thing a lot. But those cards are really good. And you don't see them at two mana. Yeah. That's like c- ever. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. the I mean, I think... Well, there have been enchantresses that cost two mana, right? Or am I mistaken? There's Argothian enchantress. Yeah. Aside from that, I think the rest of the enchantress effects are all at three mana. Yeah. And um, the fact that this is in the command zone adds a significant amount of consistency to any Enchantress deck, right? And it's just better than the non-legendary versions, right? Because it's... I think our Gothian Enchantress is a 1... A 0-1? One? It's a 0-1, zero 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 but one. it has Shroud. Oh, okay. Never mind. That is actually probably better than this. The, but still, the, just the like, game, like but... you said, consistently having this on 2, so what's what, what's your deck look like? You play this on 2, you play a 3-man Enchantress on 3, because there's a decent amount of those. Like, you could play Enchantress's Presence... And that's an enchantment, and you draw a card. Or you just start playing removal on three, or more, or ramp enchantments on three. You just start doing everything you want to do, right? Yeah, and when most of your deck becomes do its thing, draw a card, and gain a life. And it's not even like once per turn, so it's like that, uh, what's the Bant one? Um, yeah, uh, I know what you mean. Whatever it's called. I don't quite remember, I'm sorry. But, um, I just like to try to place this somewhere, like... Uh, so there's an ar- I saw uh, an argument uh, on uh, one of the I think Dana Roach or whatever from EDH Rex. Oh yeah, they talked about this on EDH Rex cast. And they were and Dana Roach is a big a big uh, green white enchantress player and he swears by Sigarda as the best enchantress player and that this is like not I mean I I I think I want to say Sigarda I mean Sigarda's better in the fact that it like does more things right like it doesn't make you play an enchantress deck right but in an enchantress deck this has to be better i yeah, think so we're gonna do a little mini uh mini breakdown of dana's argument here we're gonna we're gonna bite back as we sure. tend to do so his argument was as far as a aura voltron deck he was insisting that sigarda is better because it's a an evasive big creature that will get you in the damage and it's a win condition in the command zone and he was saying, well, you're going to play your Sithis in that deck, and you're going to go to put your, your aura on it, and somebody's going to go and remove her, and then you got two for one. And I want to break... Th- that was like one of his main things that he kept saying, and I want to break that down, how that's not exactly the case. Because for one thing, it's your commander. So your commander getting removed is not... It's a tempo thing. You're not actually like down card advantage. But you play Sithis, and you go and cast your aura onto her. That triggers Sithis, and you draw a card. So you've replaced your aura that's going to get removed by her getting removed so you're really like if somebody goes to spot remove your sithis when you go to enchant it you're up card advantage on so that, yeah right? it's either getting one for one or if you count your commander as not losing a card because it's going back into your command zone you're getting you know zero for one there like, like or other way around one for zero like your opponent's spending a resource you're not spending anything right yeah and and i want to 
kind of side with Dana because I I like to believe that you know just having the big like body and the better evasive creature is the thing, but really like card advantage is king. And one one thing that Dana was saying that I would just like to disagree with it for a moment was he was saying something along the lines of um you have you have enough tutors and ways to get your engine online that being your enchantress engine having your enchantress into play and drawing cards that and what you really need to what you really need to have consistently, you know, from your command zone is that shrouding or whatever, the hexproof threat, not shroud, the hexproof threat or whatever that you can put your auras on. But, you know, I think the Sithis in the command zone really does even does that even better because you play your Sithis from your command zone and then you're able to draw the cards to draw your even, maybe even cheaper, um, you know, uh, creatures that can be enchanted. So something like an invisible stalker. I mean, that doesn't have... Hexproof, but you can play like your little like glade, glade, Cup, glade clever scout or whatever is hexproof creatures for one mana that you can just afford to play bad creatures for because you're making up so much card advantage with your commander that draws you cards, right? Yeah, and he kept insisting on looking at everything through the lens of like an aura Voltron deck, and I don't think that's even how most enchantress decks play out. Really, I think they just kind of bury you in card advantage. Yeah, or maybe you have... I mean, you will play Auras in a Voltron... Or in, a, in an Aura... Or in an Enchantress deck, probably. Like, like you might... You'd play a Rancor, right? Because that's going to get itself back to your hand and draw a card. You might... Mm-hmm. You'd probably play an Ethereal Armor or an Ancestral Mask. Because those are some of the best... You know, they, they add so much power. Yeah, you play a few of them. But maybe it's not some, like... Yeah. It's not the dedicated thing. It's like... It's your win condition slot. Like, you might yeah. play a Crater Hoof Behemoth in, like, an Elf deck. I mean, I could see myself playing a solid, like, seven or eight auras in an, or in, in an Enchanter's deck, because, like, there's some that, like, will draw you multiple cards, or give you, like, for each aura attached to it, or give you, like, protection from creatures or whatever, or there's the ones that, maybe I'd play one lifelink one as a way to gain life back, right? Yeah, like, Sage's Reverie is a good one, because it gives you a huge buff and also draws you a ton of cards, so yeah. you play stuff like that, um, but I don't believe that you go all in on Aura Voltron. Well, maybe you do if you're playing Sigarda. Maybe. Maybe. But that being said, um, I, I want to... Do you want to just put him above Sakarta for that thing? Or do you think that, like, an Aura Enchantress deck is just kind of worse, so it goes I, below? I don't know. I think having the um, the it, two mana value, like, here, just right? that price here? point, I think it might be S tier. You think so? I think I'd be really, like... Sure. You I mean, have to you have to kill that... Like, that's my philosophy on, like, using spot removal on commanders is... You don't want to do it because, like I said, it's going back to your command zone. They're not really losing the card, but this one's going to draw you so many cards that you kind of, you have to, I think. Do you think it's better than, that, like, like here? Maybe. Think it's better than this? I think Lathiel's still really strong. Sure. I, I, it might oh, even be em- below... Emil. Oh, yeah, Emil. Yeah, and it might even be uh, below Sissé, but I just... I think that's a lot stronger than people two, might think. One thing that I think... I know we've been talking about this card for a while, but a two-mana commander that, like, it, like, is your theme and starts doing your theme right away is powerful. Um, so it just means you can get doing what your deck wants to do even sooner. It means you have a consistent play on turn two every game if you, unless you have something better to do, right? Like, mm-hmm. So that is certainly very powerful. So Especially if it's a two-mana two mana commander that draws you cards... And, oh, that's so good. It's yeah, so good. It's really good. Sure, I've been convinced that it is S tier. Now, is this Tolsmere or is this something else? Tolsmere, friend yeah. to wolves. He's a 5-mana 3-3. Three, three. When he enters the battlefield, you create Voya, friend to, friend to elves. Legendary 3-3 <laughs> three, three green and white wolf creature token. And whenever a wolf enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 3 life and that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. So, you get to maybe kill a thing and gain some life and maybe you're playing wolf tribal so you get to do that more or some changelings or something yeah i don't know if i have a lot to say about tol samir yeah i feel bad uh, talking about um the last commander for five minutes and then like tol samir he's kind of a dude and he comes the dude <laughs> yeah it's maybe okay that's like not bad the first that's all you get out of him the first thing i think of when i think of tol samir is we just got dritzed and it's got to be worse than Dritzt, right? I mean, it comes with a bigger bodied creature and it can fight things, but Dritzt is double strike. Yeah, I got to value that more, I'm, right? I'm trying to like break down how I like Dritzt better than this. And yeah, I think the double strike Dritzt gets bigger. 
Mm-hmm. I don't know. This gets a fight, so this one can actually kind of like impact the board. Yeah, it can kind of be a form of extra card advantage, but I don't know. I mean, so I would rather play this than a Shalai as the commander, but I don't know if it's. I don't think it's better than Shalai. Do you feel like maybe middle of C tier? Yeah, I don't. I think I'd rather play like this. I think I'd rather play the unicorn here. These guys are all really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe, maybe here. I just don't think it's anything very special. Do you want to go above or below the to- the plus one plus one guy, the below. token, the land falling token think guy? Below. Okay, sure. Now we have uh, another Tolsmere, another little elf boy, Tolsmere Wolfblood. Um, it's a six mana three four, and it says whenever, or sorry, it says. Other green creatures you control get uh, plus one, plus one. Same with other white creatures you control. And at tap, make a two legendary 2-2 two, two white green and white wolf named Voja into play. So you can make a 2-2 two, two Voja, Voja one time, I guess, because it has legendary. This is just worse than the other Voja, well, right? at or least no? the, uh, the Voja token will be a 4-4. Four, four. Oh, true. It gets get bigger. I didn't. For some reason, but I wasn't thinking that. I don't. This is a this is an old commander. This is from original. It's I mean it does Ravnica. pump your guys right. So in like for example a wrist deck, I think yeah. they're green and white, so they get plus two plus two. But I'm not really in the market for. It's so slow and it's six mana and it top of D tier. Yeah, sure, maybe. Yeah, fine. I'm down. All right, we got Torsten von Ursus. Mm-hmm. He is a six mana five five human soldier. He says, how can you accuse me of evil? Though these deeds be unsavory, no one will argue good shall follow from them. It's when you fucking hold a pillow over the oh mouth my of god. a butt player. <laughs> oh my god. Um, classic Mark Pool art, which is nice. Um, I appreciate that voice because if you zoom in on his face, he's got this like... He looks like he would sound like he looks Skeletor like he sound or like, something. Yeah. 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 He's definitely a bad man. <laughs> A bad man pajamba, as they say. But, um... Yes, uh, what was this? This guy was a six-mana... Spencer, this might have to be our thumbnail art for an upcoming episode. <laughs> yeah, it could be... Yeah, you're right. Who, uh... This, this other guy was a six-mana four-seven down here. This one's a six-mana five-five. I, I think I like the four-seven more. Yeah. Yeah, well... Yeah. Well, and Sir Chandler... Four-five four, better than five-five. Sir Chandler probably did not do unsavory deeds, so... Torsten von Ursus. Interesting name. Well, now we've got um, Trellisara Moondancer, another new uncommon commander from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. There's a lot of two drops in Celestia. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So she's a he, she, she, I believe. She's a two mana, two, two. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on Trellisara, a Moondancer, and scry one. Um, I had mentioned earlier in the episode that I don't think there were many life gain commanders, and then and then whatever the one was that we were talking about was probably the best one, this unicorn here. But, you know, this came out too, so I guess, you know, we're getting some life gaming in green and white. Oh yeah, and I, I love soul sisters, and in green and white, you get three soul sisters, because you get soul's attendant, soul warden, and essence warden. Yeah, so that's, that's a cool effect if you so just... turn yeah. one that into turn two her, immediately gain one life, she becomes a 3-3, three, three, you scry one... And then every time somebody plays a creature, she gets bigger and bigger. And then you can play other life gain stuff. I don't know. It's just, she's big, but you get to scry a ton. And, like, that's definitely overvalued. But, like, that's just kind of thrown on there. So it's, like... It's extra. But it's not the... Th- like, if if it was, like, not get a counter and, like, scry three, I would not be impressed. But the fact that it's, like, split up, um, the scry is more value as incidentally. I wouldn't really attribute the value to the scry. It's just kind of like it's a bonus. So she gets huge, like, Karlov, kind of, but... She's like a Karlov. She gets big slower, but she's in... She has an extra ability to scry, but she doesn't have the kill everything ability. But she's in colors that maybe have, have an extra... Yeah, you have an extra um, extra Essence Warden. Yeah, and like I was saying about, like, Arabo, you can play a lot of the, the power matters, pay off cards, and yeah, mm-hmm. she just gets really huge. Um, yeah, so... Karlov, this is not. Doesn't have the ability to just be a removal on a stick. But um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this card. I, I want to... I'd maybe give it like a top of C tier. Yeah, I, I mean, like that a lot. Yeah. Or like I, a medium power kind of deck. I mean, and even even, even though it could be a medium power deck, like you can still get off to some pretty insanely strong starts that... I mean, granted, you're... I mean, 
they can stop it with a simple removal spell, but like, you know, you can attack for like ten damage on turn on turn three or four. So I mean that's kinda cool. Maybe, yeah. But it's it's possible. Um now we have Tristani Discordant. This is the um uh, tokens commander that I was alluding to earlier that might be in contention for one of the better ones. I don't know that it's probably not as good as Riss, but it's it's uh, definitely solid. It's a 5 mana 1-4 that has that buff. Um, your other creatures get plus 1, plus 1. And, he's, and it says when it enters the battlefield, you get two one one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. And then add it, throw it on at the bottom there, it says, at the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. So it's got that um, homeward path effect on it. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting. It's nice, just a little extra thing. There's nothing really proactive you can do with that, except for there's a card from Kaladesh Block called Dubious Challenge or something like that. It's like a four-mana sorcery. You search your library for two creatures. An opponent puts one into play under their control, and you put the other into your... That's awesome. ...play play under your control, so that's like the only real tricky thing with that. But that'd be pretty cool. I've gotten owned by that effect. I've been like, oh, I'm going to steal your... Oh wait! I was like played like my like um, stolen or something that like steals creatures or whatever, and then they're like okay, and I'm like, oh wait, I'm not gonna take the Tristani because it's gonna come go back to themselves. Then they're like, oh wait, no, it's everyone's everything. Mm-hmm. Oh no, yeah. But um, just being kind of a, a army in a can kind of card, like it's a, I mean, it's not huge, but it comes. It's a one four, and it comes with two plus one ones that get plus one plus one. Um, kind of does what this uh, other whatever this guy's called um does but it comes with the the guys right away instead of on landfall yeah how do you do you you do you value that more than the landfall i think i do right or no maybe about even sure uh, but i think i i think i like a little bit better than yeah. maya so uh you feel like right above this or maybe yeah maybe i think here? around there like uh below siona i think siona is uh okay very strong i mean like it's not a bad card to, per se, but you know, you could definitely play a tokens deck with that and it'd be okay. Mm-hmm. So, speaking of token decks again, now this one's a little bit kind of different than your average token deck. It's Tristani Selesnia's Voice. It's four mana for a 2 5 Dryad. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. And you can pay three mana, tap it, populate. So, you create a token that's a copy of a creature you token you control. So, it might seem like the average token deck, but I want to give a a shout out to MTG Mudsta because mm-hmm. he has a Tristani deck that's he plays on his channel pretty often, and it's actually a really cool deck because what you do is you make token copies of, or like just like very large tokens from stuff like a Phyrexian processor, where you lose a bunch of life and make an XX equal to its uh, the life you lost. Yeah, or, or you make a, or you make cool token copies of of other stuff like there's this card from. Battle Bond, this this green creature. Whenever a creature enters under your control, you mm, can pay yeah. two mana and make a token copy of it. Stuff like that, and then populating those tokens. So I think it's kind of a at least his version of that deck. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, like Tristani's kind of an OG commander because, like, hey, it says you know gain a bunch of life and uh, make a bunch of tokens. So it's pretty pretty popular at least it was back in the day i think these days maybe people are looking for more interesting things but it's a classic i would say yeah this is what i ended up making my second commander deck into after figuring out that amara was hot garbage yeah and even like i mean i wouldn't recommend it but you don't even have to play a tokens deck for just trying to get value because you can just be playing dudes and then you get your you get to look at the life whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control yeah you gain so much life so, it, I mean, it's, like, it's a lot, trust me. Um, that being said, I mean, like, even a card, like, just playing... Like, the way I built my Jira deck, where it's just a little bit... Um, just very slightly token-themed. Even just making this slightly token-themed. As long as you have one thing to populate, you know, that's all you need to be getting value out of it, right? You really don't need too many things. I actually won a game with this one time, like, way back, like, in college, with Felidar Sovereign in that deck. Oh, that's where you get, where if you have over um, 40 life? Yeah, over 40 life on your upkeep, upkeep you win. Because you just have a lot of life. And you like you play it, and they're like, and then you're at like 80 life, and they're like, oh, we can't get you low enough, or maybe you, they can't kill the Felidar Sovereign because you have protection or something, but um, I, are you feeling are you feeling B tier for Tristani? I think Tristani is quite good. Maybe bottom of B tier? Yeah, maybe below Sigarda here? Or do you think it's maybe top of C tier? Maybe top of C tier. Sure. 
Um, Shoshani's pretty awesome, though. Unfortunately, this is the art that is less familiar, I believe. I think is is that right, or is this the? Yeah, that's the Guild Kit version. I'm sorry, I should have included the original one. It's more iconic. But now we've got the last boy, last but not well, I guess not a boy, a pig. Um, last but not least, Yasharn, implacable Earth, right? We looked this up, and it's apparently pronounced implacable. The, um, but the meaning is implaceable, was what you'd expect it to be. Not being able to be placed, but it's pronounced implacable for some reason. English the, language. The big pig. Mm-hmm. Four mana, four, four. Elemental boar. When he enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic forest and a basic plains card. Reveal those cards, put them in your hand, then shuffle. And players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. Which is a pretty relevant hate bear effect, actually. In the hoof prints, barren dust becomes fertile ground. That's cool. That's a cool flavor text. Okay, yeah, so I think um, I would like to start off by just mentioning that, you know, this is just kind of like speaks to me as a card because it has, it's just a 4 mana 4-4 four four that when it enters it gets you value immediately, but getting you two basics to your hand. That might not seem like it matters, but like... That is that is significant. I would urge you against discounting that. Well, guaranteeing you hit up to your like sixth land drop. Yeah. Assuming that you don't like ramp into this or something. Or... I mean, you guys would like. I imagine you know people would like maybe just a four mana four four that draws a card when it enters the battlefield. Like I might play that card honestly. I mean, it's not insane or anything, but this is kind of draw two ish cards. Granted, they're lands, but you know it's it's a thing. And then the other part of his ability, which I think might need more explaining, Eli, can you maybe describe what this does and doesn't affect? Yeah, so um, notable things that this messes with are like fetch lands, uh, sacrifice outlets, uh, pretty common things in Commander. Yep, you cannot activate your, your fetch land when Isharn is in play. Yeah, and it's, it's a little bit confusing because um, you can still sacrifice... People can still be be forced to sacrifice things like for example if someone plays an edict effect this doesn't stop um players from being having to sacrifice creatures it only stops it to sacrifice if the sacrifice is a cost to cast a spell or activate an ability mm -hmm. so for example like an astronaut's altar you can't do that or like a fetch land if you well that's the players can't pay life effect that stops that um mm -hmm. so yeah you can't you know you can't play some of your, you know, uh, like the black enchantments that have you pay life to do a thing or something like that. So, I mean, it's it's not, like, it's not everything that it stops, but the things that it does, it'll come out of nowhere. You'll be like, oh, it, oh, I can't do that? Ah, shoot. And he's just a big pig. Yeah, I've been locked out of a fetch land before by Yasharn, so... You know that he does something, at can least. Can confirm. It, so, yeah, go ahead. It does stuff. Um, that being said, he's not... He doesn't push you in any direction, really. He's not really doing anything to build a deck around. So I would either... Either, you know, he's your helm for some special theme of a Celestia deck that doesn't have a theme. And you're just like, I'm just going to put him there as like a value piece. Or he's just like a mid-range card, right? Maybe like a Hate bears -y effect. Maybe you'd play that. If you didn't want to play Gaddick Teague Hate Bears, you'd play Yasharn Hate Bears or something. I want to give him B for Boar. Uh, I'm gonna Maybe. go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go here. Is that crazy here? I like Yasharn. Yeah, maybe, maybe more towards the middle. Sure. Above I Shalai, like boom. Yeah, I like him. Like Boar is based. Um, well, I think that is all of the commanders. Uh, follow EDH takes on Twitter down here. Um, if you, uh, we should probably go over these just to make sure we don't want to make any changes. Yeah, let's double check. So, let's see. S tier, I think, looks okay to me. Do you have any qualms with the order of these, Eli? You know, I think people might might question the, the Sithis thing, but I really, I'm, I'm, I'm down with it. I just think we've seen so many of those commanders. When you do a thing, draw a card, and like just how I'm under the impression I've seen some really strong Enchantress decks before. Yeah. Like, Tuvasa, that's the Bant one I was thinking of. She yeah, caps you at it. one draw a turn, mm -hmm. and she's three mana. She gives you blue, that's fair. But, that's valuable, yeah. But Sithis being like, I can't think of any other two mana commander that says, when you do a thing, draw a card. Can you? Um, no, I. whenever you say that, I think of, like, Tatiova, and that's five mana. So, um, no, I 
can't... I'm sure they exist, I just can't think of them, right? And enchantments just, like, are on average so cheap. Like, they're, they're average, like, one to three mana, I think. Yeah, and like sometimes the... they draw a card on themselves. Like, if you play, like, a ground swell. Is that... No, is that the pump spell, or is that what I'm thinking? No, ground seal. Yeah, ground seal ground is the seal. graveyard hate one that also draws a card, so it's just... It's like, draw two cards, and it's graveyard yeah. hate, so... Yeah, I don't know. You Just a lot of good things. I think things. it just drowns you in value. Sure. Um, eight tier, let's see. Is Gaddock Teague being this high crazy... Maybe I think it's probably fine. Is the fat is Nizan too high because it is an equipment deck and that might just be worse? That could be the case. I think I like Karmetra being here or maybe even above Gaddock Teague. I'm not sure though. Hmm. hmm. Maybe Nizan should be bottom of A tier. Um, I think it's better than Dramoka. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe yeah. not. And I see I, that. I don't like. Ser, ser, sef, sef, Safi? Safi, but she's got to be up here somewhere, right? I'm assuming it's a strong deck. Yeah, it's got to be. Yeah, and I mean, do you want do you like this better? I think you might be right. I think Nizan might be better than Dramoka. You like Sigarda above Nizan, though? Yeah, I okay. think so. Uh, let's see, B tier. Um, is there anything that you stands out to you as being in the wrong spot here? No, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think I might, if you're okay with it, I think I might like to put the Unicorn above Amara, just as the small sure. change here. Just yeah. because Amara just seems a bit high. I can see that. I'd like to see that Unicorn deck. I think it... I, I, this actually seems like a really fun deck, honestly. Yeah, maybe like a green-white life gain, like Helm by that, or the other two mana I want to put it above like Shalai. With them, with them both in the same deck. Like, yeah. That seems like fun. I like this card. Um, Let's see. We have Tristani here. This 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 is an exciting card for me. I like it. Siona's pretty cool. Gets you card advantage. Tristani are these and this guy are two pump effects. Um, do you think any of these are maybe misplaced? No, I don't think so. I okay. think, uh, I think that's pretty solid. How about um, Pulse Mirror number two in D tier and uh, Sadar Kondo and stuff like that and Siona, Shana, and Amara and what about this? <laughs> Sure. No, we'll leave it like we'll leave it like this. Um, and then F tier, I think we can just let let slide for now. Yeah, I don't think anyone's gonna complain about the F tier. All right, so that's about what we got for the uh, Selesnia tier list. Eli, do you want to reflect about um, maybe how this uh, was different from our expectations, or maybe how it relates to the other um, tier lists we've done so far? Um, you know, I think I think this is probably our most B tiers and our most F tiers, which is surprising. So maybe, I'd say. yeah, I can't remember exactly how the other ones looked, but probably our fewest S tiers. I yeah. think. I mean, the Boros. I think we might have just had three of them too. I think we had three, is maybe four, but I think we three. had Aurelia, Gisela, and Cole, the Cole, Forge Master. Yeah. Um, I think we had three for for um, uh, Orzov as well. We had Tesa, um, Karlov, and. Uh, uh, and uh, what's um, the partner one mm -hmm. um, that draws you cards? Um, Timna. Uh, but, you know, I guess one thing to, me to say, do, we, do you think there's anything we have here that would be kind of controversial besides maybe this, uh, um, the, hidden, the hidden hand? No, harvest hand. I think maybe um, the cat guy here, whatever that card's called, is, might be something that people look at and be like, wow, that, I did, I, that's higher than I would put it. What else do you think we might have as a controversial pick here? Do you, do you think Jermoka is controversial? Maybe. That's just... A lot of this is just our opinions, our yeah. feelings on stuff. I just... I like a lot of what yeah. Jermoka does. I think most people probably put Gaddick Teague as lower, maybe? Maybe, but I just... I think... I value it, yeah. The thing about Selesnia, you're not getting, like combo commanders you're not getting like a lot of heavy value commanders yeah not mostly just i guess maybe like in the context of like a simic deck a simic list the gaddock teague might be like a b or a c tier maybe a b tier I, commander. i think you're exclusively like or almost exclusively winning with combat damage in selesnia so something like gaddock teague i think is the kind of card that you want to have yeah or jermoka where you just like are able to make your attacks to kill people yeah. because you, they can't cast on your turn right they so, kind of guarantee you to getting the thing that you need which makes sense because we have all of these uh sagarda has that evasion on it safi's the like one of the combo commanders 
Um, Karamatra just gets you insane mana Mm -hmm. and is, like, indestructible. And then some of the other things in the lower tiers just, like, are able to create big boards and attack for a lot, so... Or get you some value. So, yeah, is there anything you want to um, mention before we wrap this one up? You know, I, I think I might do the Spencer Cook thing of just, like, building a deck and taking it apart right away. I might just take a bunch of cards I have and build, like, a mediocre Sithis deck out of stuff that I have just to try and prove myself wrong or, like, see if that's as gross as I think it is. But I think that's a really strong card. You just want to play your commander on two and draw a card on three. It just seems so good. Yeah. Well, you know, that that's about all we got here. Uh, if you if you disagree with anything or you agree, let us know. We, obviously, we're not, you know, objectively correct or anything. Well, <laughs> but <laughs> um, I guess give us a follow or a comment or something if you yeah, want. Yeah, absolutely. Please leave comments and tell us, you guys are wrong and dumb. All right? <laughs> yeah. Whatever you want to say, um, just as long as you, you watch, as long as you listen. That's That's what matters to me. That's what's important, and we do like the interaction, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're always interested to hear of different experiences because other people have different different metas and different histories playing Commander. And maybe you are a big green white player. Like if you're the green white guy, like if you're the if that's your guild and you're like the expert, like Eli, you're the Boros guy. Yeah, I am the number one Boros player <laughs> in the United States. So if you're like that for Selesnia, like we should, you know, <laughs> have a together. royale there. Go, you know, we should go beat up the. Simic player, you know? Yeah, we'll go team up and beat up the Simic player yeah. and the, the Sultai players. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or what's the colors that are not Selesnia and Boros? Uh, Golgari. Golgari. Beat up a Golgari. Well, no, no, not Golgari. So it's it'd be um, blue and uh, blue, blue black. It's oh, the that's Demir player. Yeah. Go beat yep. up the Demir player. Yep. There you go. We should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I think that's about all we got, guys. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you all for watching. Yep. Appreciate See you it. next time. Bye.